Hello everybody from Plant Reviews UK. Today is the 27th of August and I am talking today. Well, I am at a beautiful beach today in uh, Torre dell'Orso in Apulia, uh, the county I am from in Italy. But today I am uh, also want to talk about a beautiful plant species that uh, is uh, actually one of the most common throughout the Mediterranean. Uh, even if it uh, can be a rare locally, so uh, in some areas it's protected and uh, for example here they actually put a white and red uh, tape uh, to, uh, yeah, to, advertise, uh, to ad uh, advertise the position of this plant and uh, this is the sea lily or sea daffodil that is uh, uh, scientifically called Pancratium uh, maritimum. Uh, you can also see uh, here a beautiful sunrise uh, in Torre dell'Orso and uh, well uh, the sea lily or sea daffodil has always been one of my uh, most beautiful memories of my summers in uh, Apulia in, uh, in Italy and uh, I'll talk now about uh, this beautiful plant uh, that is also actually possible to uh, cultivate in the United Kingdom as well as in many temperate areas as long as you take some um, um, some cultivation tips that I will explain you uh, later. So well first of all I would like to show you closer this plant. As you can see uh, this plant is uh, very similar to a lily superficially even if uh, looking at the flower uh, closer uh, you can actually see that more than a lily uh, or a daffodil this plant resembles a lot uh, an ornamental plant called an ornamental group of plants called uh, ismene and hymenocallis these are south american species that are distantly related actually to the sea lily and they belong uh, like the sea lily and actually the daffodil as well uh, to the family Amarillidase, so these species are not true lilies uh, that belong instead to the family Liliase. The plant, uh, as I said, is commonly called the sea lily or sea daffodil due to the superficial resemblance of the flowers uh, to this species. However, uh, is, uh, it belongs, uh, as I said, to the family Amarillidase, so maybe sea daffodil is a little bit a better name than sea uh, lily. The Pancratium maritimum name means uh, from the ancient Greek Pancratium means uh, pan uh, is all and Kratium strength uh, so it's basically all strength. I found two um, different uh, um, meanings of about this name so it might be that uh, all strength might be due to the um, fact that this plant was uh, used in traditional medicine as uh, a, a cure for some diseases however actually this plant is toxic so uh, the traditional medicine <laughs> didn't choose wisely in using this plant because it contains alkaloids that are actually very detrimental to uh, human health uh, and uh, however uh, the pos there are possibility of this name and I actually think uh, the probably the most uh, common reason is the most yeah the probably the reason the real reason of this name is that this plant is actually able to grow on sand dunes so that have a very uh, can reach very extreme temperatures in winter and in summer and even if obviously it is a beautiful the ground the beaches at the front and usually nice uh, pine uh, forest pine woods at the back uh, these uh, environments are actually quite extreme so really uh, you need all your strength to survive in this environment uh, about the uh, specific name maritimum means uh, marine uh, and indeed so uh, due to the fact that this plant uh, obviously grow mainly in uh, uh, seashores, uh, particularly in sandy dunes. Uh, there's uh, several species in the genus Prancratium, uh, mostly from the Mediterranean and around the Mediterranean, uh, however uh, some of them uh, are also, uh, one of them is uh, distributed also in the Canary Islands and uh, there is one also uh, in uh, India and Sri Lanka, however this one, Pancrasio Maritimum, is distributed in uh, several areas of uh, the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. Uh, the um, 
plant is uh, a plant that uh, uh, grows, uh, um, as I said, in a very harsh environment, the sandy dunes. And uh, like uh, other plants in the family Amaryllidas, it is a plant that grows from uh, bulbs. Uh, the bulb is actually uh, very similar to a daffodil bulb. Uh, is um, uh, as a, like a brown papery uh, cover and uh, actually uh, this uh, is a bulb that uh, can also uh, be found for sale from uh, for some, from some retailers uh, in uh, Europe and also in the United Kingdom. Uh, it is uh, a perennial plant and uh, the um, uh, leaves uh, are strap shaped. Usually the leaves uh, grow in uh, between autumn and uh, winter, early spring. Now you can die down in summer, however sometimes in humid environments can uh, survive even in summer. You can see here the leaves that now are dried uh, while the only part of the plant still active are actually the flower stems and obviously the developing seed pods. Uh, the plant is uh, a, a uh, usually grows within 50 meters from the seashore and uh, the uh, in order to uh, be protected by the most adverse weather, uh, the bulbs uh, uh, grow very deep underground. And uh, obviously the only part of the bulb you can see, of the plant you can see, is the leaves and the uh, flower stem. Uh, the uh, uh, leaves are usually five or six per bulb and they are strap shaped and up to 60 centimeters long and one or two centimeters wide. And well, as you can see, there's not much to see at the moment because they die, they most usually die down in summer. However, the flower stem also can grow up to 60 uh, centimeters long. And at the end of the flower stem, there are up to uh, 15 uh, flowers that I believe last only an eye, one night and uh, you can see that the flower has six petals and a kind of membrane in between the petals uh, kind of similar to uh, a, a daffodil even if as I said to me it resembles a lot the uh, flower of the Ismene and the Hymenocallis. I will put the link of these beautiful ornamental plants uh, that uh, are a lot common than Pancrasum maritimum in uh, cultivation in the United Kingdom uh, at uh, the uh, end of the video as well as on the um, description of the uh, of the video. Uh, in a, the flower are about uh, I would say eight to nine centimeters uh, in diameter and uh, they are white with a green center and kind of green stripes. Uh, the uh, stigma is long and white while the stamens are six and uh, obviously they are covered in pollen. Uh, the plant is uh, pollinated by a nocturnal moth and uh, the, um, as usually uh, for plants that are pollinated by moths, so in the night, uh, the flowers are white, as you can see, and they're also beautifully fragrant, especially at night, but uh, also now it's morning, it's about six in the morning, so uh, the, as you can see, the sun is still rising and uh, the fragrance is really heavenly, it's very, very kind of sweet, very difficult to describe. Um, it's not citrusy, I would say uh, sweet and a kind of uh, freshly cut grass, very very pleasant uh, anyway. And uh, um, after pollination, the plant develop uh, its seed pod. It's, each seed pod is uh, uh, kind of triangular in shape. And when the seed pod is mature, it splits open. Uh, you can see here, you have a, a, we have a seed pod with uh, mature seeds. Uh, each seed is uh, um, surrounded by a spongy tissue, the seeds are black. 
and surrounded by a spongy tissue that is very light. Uh, this allows the seeds to be dispersed by the wind and uh, in other areas on land but also sometimes they are blown off in the sea and actually from the sea they can uh, be transported by water currents to very far areas therefore colonizing other areas uh, obviously near the seashore and uh, guaranteeing the plant a, a wide uh, distribution uh, in the environment indeed is one of the most common plant in the Mediterranean Sea across the sand, uh, the sand dunes. The, um, the, the, the plant uh, grows, uh, uh, can grow in the garden and uh, you have to, any way to mimic the, uh, the environment that of, uh, this plant needs uh, in nature. So it obviously needs a very, very well drained soil, uh, sandy or gritty at least, uh, obviously absolutely not waterlogged. The plant itself is uh, quite resistant to the cold, can uh, it is resistant, I found down to minus 5 degrees, however, um, I have some uh, seedlings in my uh, greenhouse in the United Kingdom and this, uh, this winter, winter, uh, yeah, in February and uh, yeah, in February 2021, so this year, we had the temperature down to minus 7 and actually the, uh, my little bulbs developed from the seeds uh, survived and uh, they were able to grow uh, new leaves as well in uh, late spring so uh, actually this plant can even survive minus seven however they were in a greenhouse obviously they were not uh, exposed to uh, the, a lot of rain that we had as usual in the United Kingdom uh, this year because the combination of uh, sub-zero temperature and uh, very wet conditions that actually can uh, damage the bulb uh, but uh, the uh, cold itself really is not a big problem for this plant as long as obviously it's not uh, less than uh, minus uh, 7 degrees Celsius maybe it can handle a couple of degrees less I'm not too sure anyway this plant is considered hardy uh, down to um, down to uh, USDA zone 8. Another requirement of this plant obviously is full sun. Uh, the plant uh, obviously grows on sand dunes so it's exposed to sun all day long and uh, this is another requirement that the plant needs to grow and bloom well. In the United Kingdom obviously you know the uh, weather conditions are different from the Mediterranean. The weather is often quite cloudy. I personally live in, Cl live in Kent so it's actually this is the uh, sunniest county of uh, England so I'm very glad that uh, maybe I have good chances to grow this beautiful daffodil and however especially in spring and summer the plant needs a lot of sun in order to bloom uh, to bloom regularly uh, usually the time in between the uh, you plant the seeds and you plant and the, the plant blooms is about three four years sometimes longer obviously uh, the less light is available the longer uh, the plant needs to reach uh, a blooming size and also the uh, the sunnier the area, the uh, more the blooms, the more the flowers. Uh, about the uh, uh, fertilizing, um, I would say that uh, obviously as other bulbs it's uh, pretty good to fertilize. This plant I found is recommended during the growing phase, so winter and spring fertilize the plant once every three weeks, however obviously I have very small plants yet and I never fertilize them so far. Uh, however, I don't believe the sand dunes are actually rich in organic matter, so I, I, I believe this plant can grow very well even without uh, uh, much uh, fertilizer anyway. Uh, about the um, retailers of this plant, I found uh, um, quite a few retailers of this plant, both for seeds and bulbs, I will, uh, available in the United Kingdom or at least in uh, Europe where this plant uh, uh, well, where many countries, uh, in many countries, uh, uh, this plant is from. So, because this plant can grow in many areas of the Mediterranean, so uh, including many countries in Europe, Greece, uh, Italy, France, Spain, for example. Uh, 
and uh, therefore uh, many people, uh, sorry, many retailers have this plant available for sale. Obviously, I would always recommend to um, buy seeds and bulbs uh, from reputable suppliers. Uh, one in the United Kingdom, for example, that has this piece is for sale um, quite often is uh, rareplants.co.uk and it's actually not uh, too expensive. Uh, usually they are about uh, five to ten uh, pounds per bulb obviously it's not very cheap but is uh, i found bulbs that are a lot more expensive anyway a cheaper option is to buy uh, seeds from uh, sellers i will put uh, uh, some um, I will also put some of the links in the description if you like this plant. Uh, this plant is really one of the most beautifully fragrant and beautifully um, shaped flowers and plants. Uh, about the um, uh, uh, yeah, the conditions of the plants, uh, the conditions to buy the plant. As I said, uh, always try to avoid to uh, take plants. Uh, always avoid to take plants from the wild because uh, these plants, uh, considering the sand dunes, are very uh, are, um, and, uh, the sand dunes are an environment, especially in the Mediterranean, can be subject uh, to a lot of uh, ecological problems. Uh, this plant uh, is uh, losing uh, many of uh, the areas where it used to grow, uh, so. It can be locally rare so um, it is important not to harvest the bulbs and the plants from the nature if you go in holidays uh, uh, in the Mediterranean or in other uh, countries where this plant is from but always uh, buy from uh, captive stock captive bread stock and uh, this is really a plant that is uh, not that rare in cultivation but I really wanted to show you uh, growing in the wild my uh, seedlings are still very small so I thought that uh, you would have appreciated the plant uh, seeing the plant in its natural environment so I want to close the video with one view of this plant growing on the sand dunes uh, with the pine wood behind and most importantly a view well you can see my flip-flops here a view of this plant growing so close to the seashore where to a Mediterranean beach where this plant is from I hope that you can see not only my legs sorry but also the beautiful environment that this plant is native from as usual, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, it would be great if you can uh, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video and the other videos on my channel, it would be great if you can please subscribe uh, in this way. Obviously, YouTube get uh, knowledge that you like my videos and uh, can, adver uh, can promote my uh, YouTube channel on the platform. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope you had good holidays if you had already this year. And otherwise, I wish you uh, great holidays uh, if you have some more this year or next year. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.